when I log into my system, I just do so from the TTY and then start up Xorg with something like StarTex, which also starts up my window manager. But many people out there use tools like LightDM, SDDM, GDM, and other tools like that, with the DM standing for Display Manager. But when you think about the name, it doesn't really make that much sense, because it's not managing your display. It's not a compositor like Pycom. It's not a window manager like i3, BSPWM, Kwin, and things like that. And it's not even controlling your display properties like, say, XRanda would, or any other number of display management operations. What it does is provides a login screen and manages your session. So, why the name then? Well, like a lot of Xorg, a lot of X11, a lot of just X in general, it was settled on about 30 or so years ago. Now, some of you may know about this application because you can still use it today. The first X Display Manager was rightly called XDM, the X Display Manager. But this first implementation had some pretty serious limitations. For example, it only checked if the terminal you're using is connected when you first connected. So if you were to say, switch off your terminal, it would still think you're connected, making reconnecting really annoying to do. So to address this in the following year with X11R4, a new protocol was introduced, the X Display Manager Control Protocol. Now, the implementation of this has certainly changed a bit over the years with going from like X386 into Xorg and all of the other implementations over the years, but with tools like LightDM, you can still make use of this. And I've done a full video on this, but we need to keep in mind the context of when X was first being made and the way it was first being used back in the 80s, created at MIT to allow students shared access to really expensive computing hardware. And shared access is the key point here, because the modern way that we use X is incredibly different to the way it was traditionally being used. Nowadays, for, you know, a couple hundred dollars, you can buy a laptop with a multiple gigahertz CPU, and in many cases, a dedicated GPU. This allows you enough computing power to run both your X server and your X applications, otherwise known as your X clients, on the exact same hardware. Now, when we say display, we don't mean the modern colloquial usage of the term, meaning your computer monitor. What we actually mean is the technical usage in the context of X. Remember that Xorg now case is called the X display server. So display more accurately in this context refers to the combination of your X server along with your IO devices, things like your speakers, your monitor, along with your keyboard and mouse. So when it comes to the way that X was being used, most students didn't have a personal computer. The school certainly wasn't buying them for them, that would probably bankrupt the school. And if they did have one, it probably wasn't their personal computer, it was probably a personal family computer. But in many cases, many homes still didn't have those. And remember, the X was created in the context of a university, and first created for the IT students, which had much stronger requirements than what was being offered by the PCs of the time. Instead, the model would look something a bit more like this, where you wouldn't be doing the difficult processing on your local hardware, you'd be using a simple X terminal, and that X terminal would connect to a remote system over some form of network connection, and the difficult processing of running your applications would be done on that system. Now, when I say X terminal, I don't mean the application X term or other modern terminal emulators like, say, Alacrity. These are emulating the terminal experience. What I mean is a physical terminal. This is a fairly simple computing device which basically exists solely for the purpose of connecting to another system. In this case being an X terminal, I don't mean the older monochrome terminals. Instead what I mean is a terminal that has an X server built in and is made for displaying X applications. 
So the student would use this X terminal to remote into this external system and then start running whatever applications they want. Let's say they're using X term, let's say they're a more modern user and they start running a web browser like Firefox. All of the complicated processing is being done on this remote system and then pretty much all that's being done on the user side is handling the input and then displaying the output on their screen. And this model would work great with a single user. But what happens if a second, a third, a fourth, a fifth, any number of users you want to have connect to this system at the exact same time? Well, user one is going to have all of their applications open and they're going to be displayed on all of the other user systems and their input's going to be sent to the same applications. If they start opening applications of their own, now every user that's connected is going to see all of the exact same applications. This model doesn't work at all. So what you need is you need a system to manage the separate displays. That's where the display manager comes in. So remember that protocol from earlier, XDMCP, the X Display Manager Control Protocol. Basically what happens here is the X server connects to the display manager over that protocol effectively creating a graphical telnet session with the X server being the telnet client and the display manager being the telnet server. And then the display manager is going to start up a session for that individual user. So we have user one session and we have user two session. These aren't sandboxed or anything, but they are being treated as separate elements on the system where user one isn't able to interact with what user two is doing. With that context, it makes perfect sense why back in the 80s, they called it a display manager because that's what it's doing. It's managing the connections of your displays. Maybe session manager also works as a good name, but display manager, because they were calling things display servers and displays anyway, kind of just fits in with the rest of the theme. But eventually over time, computers got cheaper and got faster and one day it got to the point where it became viable for a personal computer to have a GUI running alongside it. And the need to run these network terminals continued to fade over time, and they still do exist in some context today, but very, very limited usage. Nowadays, it is viable to run both your X clients and your X server on the exact same hardware. But the name stuck around because under the hood, it is still doing this same process. It's just that the network connection is now a local network connection. But when people discuss things like X being network transparent, this is part of what they're discussing. The fact that you can run your X applications on completely separate hardware to the hardware running your X server. So let me know your thoughts down below. Did you know about why it was called a display manager? Did you just accept the name? Did you think the display manager still makes sense in a modern context and never really thought about it? I would love to know. So if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. If you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, starting bearer pay linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robertson Plays. That's going to be it for me and... I'm out.